we're back with another episode of Critical History. Today, we'll look at one of the most devastating and intriguing episodes of European history, what some actually refer to as the first world war in history. No, not World War I. I'm talking about the Thirty Years' War. In a previous video, I already mentioned that one of my pet peeves is when a decades-long conflict is oversimplified by referring to it as a single war, and never was that more true than in the case of the Thirty Years' War. Now, right off the bat, let me say it is not going to be possible to cover this topic in one short, succinct video, nor will it be possible to delve into any of its mysteries without first laying some groundwork. Because, let's be honest, even those of us who are history fanatics know little more about the Thirty Years' War than that it ended with the famous Peace of Westphalia in 1648. So, where do we begin? Let's go through the basics. Who, what, where, when, and why. Who? It might be easier to say who wasn't involved. It started as a largely Protestant versus Catholic affair, with the Spanish attempting to complete their conquest of the Netherlands, but in the process, Bohemia also rebelled. Over the course of the entire conflict, France, Spain, Austria, the Holy Roman Empire, England, the Ottomans, Sweden, and Russia all had a part to play. The reason it can't be defined as simply as Protestant versus Catholic is because at the end of the Thirty Years' War, France and Spain were still duking it out for another 11 years. And they're both Catholic. Most of the fighting took place in modern-day Germany, but during this time, some of the battles occurred as far afield as Quebec City, which was captured by English adventurers led by David Kirk in 1629. What? One of the largest, most destructive conflicts in all of European history. England and France rose to prominence. Austria and the Holy Roman Empire were fragmented and splintered, depleted and exhausted. Spain, which was in a sort of royal union with Austria via the Habsburgs, experienced a major setback. And really, there were more losers than winners in this conflict, although rather infamously, money changers profited greatly. Again, it's a long story. Where? Across most of Western and Central Europe. Although its impacts were felt as far away as Russia, the Ottoman Empire, and the colonies in the New World. It was also at this time that the Dutch East Indies Company rose to prominence. As I mentioned before, one of the aspects of the Thirty Years' War that is well known among history buffs is the Treaty of Westphalia that brought it to a close, but you may have also heard about a rather infamous cardinal who was instrumental in France at this time by the name of Cardinal Richelieu, the Red Eminence himself. When? 1618 to 1648. Although tensions were building up for some time, and as I mentioned earlier, France and Spain kept fighting for another 11 years afterwards. Why? One of the main topics I want to cover in this video. The Thirty Years' War was nominally about religion. It was to a much greater extent, however, about wealth, power, and control. I think one of the main reasons that people confuse uh, the two, the political and the religious aspects, are because church and state weren't nearly as well defined in those days as we separate them today. Now, the war has to be examined in the context of the Reformation and the Counter-Reformation that followed, but overall it was about power about whether the Protestant princes, the Habsburg of Austria and Spain, or the French would be the dominant power in Western and Central Europe.
not to mention where everyone else, like the Dutch and the English, would fit into this new order. Right off the bat, I want to get to some of the interesting aspects of the Thirty Years' War that I've come across. First, did you know that the Protestant Prince of Transylv Transylvania asked for Ottoman assistance to help him invade Habsburg, Hungary? That's right, only about 150 years after Vlad Dracul was imp impaling people on wooden stakes to prevent the Ottomans from invading, the Christian Prince of Transylvania is begging for their help and fighting alongside them. Another interesting point is that the Russian Empire was fighting on the side of the Protestants and the French, or more specifically, helping the Swedes in their fight against the Polish. But Cossacks from the Crimea region, the Zaporizhian Cossacks, fought on the side of the Habsburgs and the Polish. I did warn you that this was a complicated, far-flung affair, didn't I? England fought against Spain, and later against France as well. A common trend in Germany was for each state to individually negotiate a peace, hoping that would keep them out of the war. But because it went on for so long, it was inevitable that soldiers would march through, raid, and pillage. The treaties basically only protected the rulers, not the people. The immediate causes of the war are generally considered to be the long-running conflict between Habsburg, Spain, and the Netherlands. The Netherlands were becoming increasingly rich and influential with their massive navy and widespread trading empire. Spain, with its massive power at the time, felt threatened or at least like the Netherlands were low-hanging fruit. The Thirty Years' War is actually the last 30 years of what's usually called the Eighty Years' War between Spain and the Netherlands. So Spain and Netherlands signed a 12-year truce in 1609, but everyone knew that when the truce expired, Spain was likely to invade immediately. All of Europe knew the exact route the Spanish army would take based on existing alliances. This was referred to as the Spanish Road. But there was a problem. The County Palatine on the Rhine was expected to refuse the Spanish entry. The leaders of the Palatine were going all in, fully leveraged, to make the most of their newfound political clout. King James of England, of King James Bible fame, married his daughter Elizabeth to Friedrich V, the Elector Palatine. Despite this being considered a political mismatch, a marriage between essentially a count and a princess. Let me pause here for a second and say I can see why the Thirty Years' War is referred to as a religious war, because it's a straightforward, simple, and succinct summary. To be clear, I do believe that religion was used to motivate the soldiers involved, but the leaders of the conflict were more concerned, as always, with political power and their own wealth. Enough of the groundwork, how did it actually start? Well, in May 1618, the Holy Roman Emperor demanded at the behest of lo local nobility that the construction of Protestant churches in Prague be halted. Prague was the capital of Bohemia and there was a well-established tradition that the King of Bohemia would be elected as the Holy Roman Emperor. Sort of like in England, where the crown prince is called the Prince of Wales. So the emperor, Matthias, of House of Habsburg, was in his 60s, and to ensure a smooth succession, he named Ferdinand II King of Bohemia. Protestant nobles burst into the Bohemian Chancellery, where four Catholic lords regent were meeting. Two of the lords were dismissed, and the other two admitted that they were responsible for the letter demanding the halt to construction of Protestant churches. They just thought they would be arrested. 
Instead, they were thrown out the window. From the third floor, a 70-foot drop. And, according to legend, they landed in a dung heap. Talk about adding insult to injury. The counterclaim from the Empire was that they were saved by angels. So, take your pick. Shortly after this, the defenestration of Prague, the former king of Bohemia and reigning emperor Matthias died, and as a result, the Bohemian nobles decided to elect a new king rather than recognize Ferdinand. They chose Friedrich V, married to King James's daughter, remember? At this point, both sides knew war was inevitable, although I suspect no one realized quite how devastating the war would be, or how long it would go on. The first two years, 1618 and 1619, were spent making preparations, and only minor conflicts occurred, at least in Bohemia. Further east, or rather southeast, the Ottomans had invaded Hungary with 60,000 troops they had promised to Friedrich. However, after they won a major battle, News came in that the Poles had sent a massive army behind them into Moldova, so instead of continuing west to help in Bohemia, they had to return east. By 1620, both the Protestant rebels and the Catholic, Spanish, and Austrians had recruited massive armies, 30,000 men under the Protestants and 25,000 veteran soldiers under Ferdinand. The major battle, however, did not occur until November of that year, and by then, almost half of the Protestant army, mercenaries and peasant farmers, had deserted. The Catholic army had more experience, as they had been fighting against the Venetians in previous years in what is called the Uskok War. Outside of Prague, the two armies met, and the Battle of White Mountain was fought. It seems the Protestant army was already badly demoralized, probably from a long forced march, from knowing the size of the opposing army due to not being paid, not to mention seeing your fellow soldiers desert in the previous weeks probably makes you wonder if you haven't made a terrible mistake. The fact that it was mid-November and troops had been sleeping rough for weeks can't have helped either. So when the Catholics sent cavalry around the flank, many of the Protestants started fleeing without so much as firing a shot. An unorganized retreat is a good way to get killed or captured, as 4,000 of the Protestant soldiers found out. In less than two hours, the battle was over. The Protestant army was routed and Prague was pillaged. One of the witnesses of, witnesses of the battle is said to have been René Descartes. Bohemia, modern-day Czech Republic, was never Protestant again, and to this day it is one of the most agnostic or atheist countries in Europe. Although, let's not kid ourselves, not all of the blame goes to the Thirty Years' War. Communism, for most of the second half of the 20th century, played an equally, if not larger, part. Friedrich was deposed as King of Bohemia and became infamous as the Winter King, crowned in the fall only to lose it by the springtime. King James's daughter, Elizabeth, the Winter Queen. He managed to retain his castles on the Rhine for another few years though. Now some of the major themes of the Thirty Years' War were the fluidity of allegiances, uh, allies signing separate treaties, mercenaries fighting without pay, and civilians consistently suffering the worst. Because they weren't getting paid, the mercenaries generally just took whatever they could get their hands on. It was one of the first wars where knowledge of atrocities committed against civilians was widespread. After the Battle of White Mountain, the war separated into two theaters, the Ottomans versus the Poles in the east and Protestant versus Catholics on the Rhine. 
the Ottomans were stymied in 1621 and withdrew, and the Sultan decided to blame his Janissaries, which didn't work out great for him, and he was strangled by them in his palace in 1622. The empire continued its streak of victories through 1623, and the war basically looked over. There was no fighting in 1624, as armies on both sides had been disbanded, but things took an unexpected turn in 1625. Denmark and Norway, Protestant, were in a union and had even managed to add the city of Hamburg to their domain. Control of the sound provided a steady income and years of peace had brought wealth and stability. Now, there's still a lot to discuss as we're only a quarter of the way through the war and we haven't even gotten around to talking about what war looked like at this time, what weapons and tactics prevailed, and specifically the pioneering use of combined arms in the Tercios, massive formations of pike and musketeers. These were flanked by cavalry that were usually armed with pistols. Nor have we gotten around to the major political impacts of the war. Although, to give you a taste, did you know that in the final stages of the Thirty Years' War, Scotland, Ireland, and England were all embroiled in civil wars. And that shortly after the Treaty of Westphalia in 1649, total serfdom was introduced in Russia. Hmm, I wonder if all these events are connected. Stay tuned to find out. Now, if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and if you want to support the channel, check out my book, Conquest of Truth. Link is in the description. Until next time, you know what to do. Stay critical.